We're ready to arrange the posterior teeth. We've chosen lingualized occlusion, so the mandibular teeth we're going to use are anatoline teeth, which have a shallow cusp height of about 12 degrees. We chose a 32 millimeter tooth because that seems to be what would fit best in this particular arch. For the maxillary teeth, we've chosen a steeper cusp tooth or a 33 degree tooth in the same dimension, a 32 millimeter tooth to use for the maxillary teeth. We also need to think about placing those mandibular teeth in a slight compensating curvature. You don't want to put them into steep compensating curvature for lingualized occlusion. Um, a number of years ago, I had sent to me a uh, series of templates of various arcs. Those were arcs that ranged anywhere from flat plane or zero degree up to uh, about a four inch ball, a ball of about a four inch diameter, which meant that it has a very steep arc to it. And the one that I particularly like to use for uh, lingualized occlusion is one that is the same as the curvature of a 10 inch diameter ball. And this is a very slight, as you can see, a very slight curvature, both uh, a sphere, uh, both uh, a lateral and an anterior posterior curvature would be about the same curvature as that of a ball 10 inches in diameter. So mark onto the cast the uh, crest of the ridge on both sides. I usually do that by taking a straight edge of some sort and siding down the ridge of the mandibular and take a pencil and put a mark on the land of the cast on either end of that straight edge and this line would show you then where the crest of the ridge is after you have the base plate seated and we know where it is without having to guess at it. We can do the same on the other side now by siding down the ridge, siding up where that line would be and putting a mark on the land of the cast so that if you sight down this line that would be directly over the crest of the ridge. The object of that is to arrange the lower posterior teeth so that the central groove of those lower posterior teeth is going to be directly over the crest of the ridge. You always want to look at how far back you can arrange teeth. You don't want to put teeth up onto this vertical slope of the ridge and as we can see on both sides, on this side it starts right about here, the slope, the ridge is pretty horizontal till we get to about here and then it starts a vertical slope. So we want to end our arrangement of teeth about at the point where that vertical slope starts. We want to do the same on the other side which would mean that we want those teeth placed about there. That's about as far back as we would like to place teeth. How many teeth are we going to be able to use? Can we use all four teeth in a quadrant? In this particular case, we can. As we can see, those four posterior teeth will fit in and the distal of the second molar will come out just about where we anticipated that we would like to end occlusion. So we're going to be using all of the teeth in that quadrant. And if we look at the other side, we'll find that they do approximately the same thing. They go back about the same distance. So we're going to start by arranging mandibular first premolars. And we're going to start that process by pooling wax where we want the mandibular first premolar to go. And get a nice pool of wax. And so we're going to set that tooth in. And as we can see, that tooth is setting high. And I can't take it down any further because as I seated that tooth, the collar of the tooth is hitting the base plate right there. So therefore, I need to take part of this tooth off in order to be able to arrange it. So we'll just take a grinding instrument, a rotary grinding instrument of some sort, and we're going to grind off a portion of the, of the collar of that tooth to allow us to set that tooth down into the occlusion rim far enough to match the occlusal plane. And we're going to pull the wax once again.
and arrange the tooth so that the facial surface of that tooth falls in the arch form that we started of the, of the lower anterior teeth. In other words, when we look at it from here, we look at the arch form that we started, the buccal cusp of that tooth should fall in the arch form that we started with the mandibular anterior teeth. So we want to arrange the tooth in such a manner that the facial surface falls into the arch form. When you look at this tooth from the side, it should be virtually vertical. Instead of leaning either mesially or distally, it should be virtually vertical. It appears to have a slight mesial inclination there, so let's straighten it up just a little bit. About there, and if we lay, we close the maxillary arch into it, where we saw where the occlusal plane was, and we'll see that that tooth is ending up right on the occlusal plane that we anticipated. So we have it in the arch form this way. We have it in this way far enough to follow that arch form and we have it at the vertical height to match the occlusal plane that we anticipate. And the other thing that we need to look at is are we, is it going to, the cusp of it, fall into a compensating curvature. And basically both the buccal and lingual cusp should touch that template when we lay it on it, which it does. Now we're ready to arrange the mandibular second premolar. And we do that by, again, pooling the wax And we arrange the tooth so that the crest, of the, that the central groove is right over the crest of the ridge, that it is virtually vertical, and at this point it's a little bit leaning to the mesial, so we want to move it around till this surface, the long axis of the tooth is virtually vertical. It's following the arch form like we started out with the anterior teeth in the first premolar. The central groove central groove is right over the crest of the ridge as we anticipated. There's the crest of the ridge and there's the central groove of the teeth. should be right over the crest of the ridge. And in addition to that, we want to check with our template to see if it's following We have the occlusal surface now until it hits the template exactly. Now in doing that, what I've done is I've moved it slightly to the buckle. So I need to see what caused that. Usually that means that I am getting an interference of the collar of the tooth to the base plate, which means that I either have to grind the base plate or grind the collar of the tooth. And we have enough collar of the tooth on these particular teeth that I can grind the collar on this and be fine with it. So we're just going to grind a little off of that collar. so that we can arrange that tooth at the correct vertical position without interference from the base plate. Okay. From the, when we view this from the buckle, we see it has a slight mesial inclination at this point. So we want to move the, the collar of that tooth forward just a little bit to give it more of a vertical inclination. See to it that it's over the crest of the ridge and check to see that all points cusp of the tooth are touching, which they are. Both the lingual and the buccal cusp are touching the template. Now we're ready to arrange the mandibular first molar. Pull the wax. Arrange the tooth into the arch form, a buccal lingual direction now, keeping the central groove over the crest of the ridge, and with the template, see to it that all cusps touch the template. It appears as though the distal of it is moving out a little bit towards the buccal, so I need to straighten it up just a little bit, and then check it with the template once again. still slightly off. I need to pull the wax a little more and check to see whether or not I have interference and I do not with the base plate. It's just a matter of I didn't have the wax 
soft enough to allow me to arrange the tooth. So I soften the wax a little more and try it again. Now we have all cusp touching and let's see, and now it is lined, aligned properly in that this central groove is following back pretty much a straight line directly over the crest of the ridge. Now we're ready for a mandibular second molar. Same principles, following that compensating curvature and using the template, which is a 10 inch diameter of an arc, using the template for the vertically positioning of the teeth, make sure that it follows the compensating curvature that we like, and keeping the central groove of the tooth over the crest of the ridge. I like to just mash it in with the template once we get it to that correct buccal lingual position, and as you can see it's drifting out on the distal, so I need to analyze why that's drifting. And we're getting a little interference right across the distal edge of the ridge lap of the tooth, right there. So we'll do just a slight bit of grinding on that, and that'll allow us to put that tooth in its correct position. And again, pull the wax. Place the tooth in its correct buccolingual position. Use the template for the vertical positioning of the tooth until we get both or all cusp of the tooth touching the template. And we have pretty good alignment of the tooth now. And if we look, we can see that this central groove is over the crest of the ridge. And we have a nice compensating curvature being built into that occlusal plane as we go. At this point, I want to stabilize the teeth by basically melting some wax around the teeth and smoothing it up somewhat with a warm spatula. I like to take a hot spatula and go into the interproximals of each tooth as I do this and melt some wax so it flows up around each tooth very, very smoothly and firmly. And that helps stabilize the tooth to, to help you through the try-in periods. At this stage now, we have some wax running all over, so let's clean it up just a little bit. And we can get rid of the extra wax now that's flowed down onto the land of the cast. Clean it back up once again. Now let's analyze and see where our occlusal plane turned out on it. Looks parallel to the maxillary ridge. Looks real good. We started an arch form of the lower anterior teeth and the buccal cusp of the posterior teeth continued that arch form on back. The central groove is over the crest of the ridge. Another thing I like to do, and this is good for students uh, to learn to do in analyzing an occlusal plane, or uh, analyzing whether or not the teeth are in the correct buccal lingual position, is look at the denture from the back side and look for the crest of the ridge and then put an instrument underneath there where the crest of the ridge is and then look to see if the central groove is directly over that instrument and if it is you know you're in good position buccolingually. The tendency particularly with students is to have all of those teeth setting too far to the buccal. So that's something to note that as you're arranging teeth to analyze by looking at it from all angles. Now we're ready to do the same thing on the other side, is to arrange the right side posterior teeth. I don't have as much wax removed over here, so I'm going to go ahead and just remove some more wax on this side so that I don't have to, with each individual tooth, stop and take a bunch of wax off. Pull the wax where we want that first premolar to go. And see if it'll set in there. And if we 
get it in far enough now to follow the arch form and we need to look at the vertical position of it and we see it's a little high. We would like to take that down just a little more and it won't go down because it's against the collar of the tooth. Or against the, the collar of the tooth is against the base plate right there. So we're going to take a little of that collar off just to allow us to position that tooth in the correct position. And arrange the tooth. And first of all, looking at the arch form so that the buccal cusp falls in the arch form. Then looking at the buccal lingual position so that the central groove is directly over the crest of the ridge. And then look at the vertical position of the tooth to see that when we lay our template on there, that the tooth touches the template. That's both the buccal cusp and the lingual cusp touching the template. We can stabilize that tooth because we think we have it in the correct position. And we can move on, pull the wax for the second premolar. And again, place it and what we anticipate being a good buccal lingual position for the tooth with the central groove over the crest of the ridge and check it for vertical position with the template and we see it will not go all the way in place because it's interfering again the collar onto base plate so we're going to trim a little bit of collar off I don't have enough wax on there is the problem, so I'm going to melt a little bit more wax and place it in, in that position so that I don't end up having to have that tooth unsupported. It's just not supported enough to hold it, so we'll add a little more wax to the area. Now let's see if we can position that tooth in its correct position without leaving it unsupported. should be about right there, perhaps a little bit high vertically. So if you hold the tooth when you're placing these, if you'll hold the buccal side of it with one hand with a finger on it and place your template on it, you can fairly well mash it in place with the template. We've got it hitting the template properly now and it's in the correct buccal lingual position. So let's pull the wax around it now to stabilize it a little more. Clean it up some so we can see it a little better. Now when we look at it from the arch form standpoint, we see that we're following this arch form quite nicely. The buccal cusp becoming continuous with the arch form that we've started. It's over the crest of the ridge, central groove directly over the crest of the ridge, and vertically we have it placed in such a position that we lay our template on it and all cusp touch the template. Now we're ready to arrange the first molar. Place it buckle lingually in the position we think it should be. Look at it from a vertical standpoint, it still looks a little high. So let's hold it with the side of the finger with the finger and mash it in place with the template till all cusp touch the template. And then we'll analyze where we are with it. It doesn't look too bad. It could be twisted just a little bit. Perhaps look a little better if we twist it just a tad and then check it with our template once again and we're right on it with the template, all cusp are touching it. Again, buckle lingually, we have it from this line to that line, that central groove is directly over the crest of the ridge. Now let's stabilize that tooth. Melt the wax around it so the wax holds the tooth nice and firmly. And again, we'll melt or pull the wax where we want the second molar to go. And it will not go in place because we're getting a fairly good interference of base plate to the tooth on the distal and buckle of the tooth. Right in this area right there, 
and across the distal. So we'll trim the tooth somewhat across the distal and the buckle, the collar of the tooth. Well, we pull the wax very well, get a nice little pool of wax, place the tooth. Still a little bit vertical, but let's see if, we, if it'll mash in place from there. No, it won't. We've still got some interference with that tooth. At this point, what I want to do with this, since I'm trimmed a fair amount off the tooth already, I want to eliminate some base plate. I didn't think we'd have to eliminate much base plate, but I think in this particular case, I need to eliminate a little bit of base plate back in that area. And that'll allow us to place that tooth better. So we'll just take our burr and cut some of that base plate off. So we're going to add some wax back to the area where we trimmed on the base plate where that tooth is going to be placed. And now let's see if that tooth will go into position. Get it placed buccolingually and aligned, aligned as we'd like it buccolingually. The central groove down directly over the crest of the ridge. Then hold the tooth in place with the finger and mash it in place with your template. And there we are. Need to clean it up a bit by melting the wax around the tooth, smoothing it up somewhat. I'm going to go to the right side, to the left side now, and clean the teeth a little better. And by that I mean getting rid of any excess wax around the occlusal surfaces of those teeth, because before we can arrange the maxillary posterior teeth, we have to create a trough on the mandibular posterior teeth in which the maxillary posterior teeth, the lingual cusp of the maxillary posterior teeth will fit into this trough that we're going to create. So we're just going to clean them up a little bit. Get rid of any excess wax that might be in your way. And then for making the trough, we're going to use a rotary instrument with a large acrylic resin burr or the Brasler E-cutters is the ones that we use. We want to use this large Brasler E-cutter and we're going to create a trough down the occlusal surface of all four of those posterior teeth on both sides. The object of that is to eliminate or to minimize the amount of, of uh, cusp fossa relationship that you might have of teeth because when we arrange the maxillary posterior teeth if we cut a trough down through here we can arrange those maxillary posterior teeth without having to have an exact anterior posterior cusp fossa relationship. One of the beauties of lingualized occlusion is it does not require an anterior posterior or mesiodistal uh, exact cusp fossa relationship. So what we're going to do is to eliminate some of the transverse ridges and marginal ridges that we have on those posterior teeth so that we are not locked into a mesiodistal cusp fossil relationship of the maxillary teeth. And we do that by just taking a large burr and going right down the central groove of those teeth to minimize the amount of transverse ridges and marginal ridges that we have on those teeth. And now what we have is an arrangement of 12 degree posterior teeth that are arranged 
with the central grooves directly over the crest of the ridge on both sides. They're arranged so that the total of all of the cusp of the posterior teeth conform to a 10 inch sphere for a compens slight compensating curvature. Now with that in mind, we can arrange 33 degree teeth so that the lingual cusp of those 33 degree teeth are going to fit, these lingual cusp of the maxillary 33 degree teeth are going to fit firmly into this groove that we have carved onto those lower teeth. And since we carve that groove in such a manner as to minimize the amount of marginal ridges and transverse ridges on these teeth, we're not locked into an exact anterior-posterior cusp-fossil relationship. So we're ready now to arrange maxillary posterior teeth, and let's start that by removing some of the wax on the maxillary left side. where we want to place the maxillary first premolar, pull the wax, nice little pool of wax, and we'll remove the maxillary first premolar from the card, and we're going to place that tooth, first of all, for an aesthetic arrangement, meaning that the buccal cusp of that tooth should fall into the arch form. We created an arch form, and the buccal cusp becomes contiguous with this arch form that we started. So we place it in that position, and then see how the cusp fossil relationship is going to work out. In this particular case, it works pretty good. And that lingual cusp of this maxillary first premolar should fit right into that little groove that we created on the lower. And now we can sear that tooth in place to make sure that it is nice and stable. Pull some wax for the second premolar. Place the second premolar into the arch form that we started. Hold it with a forefinger from the buckle. Press it in place. And we would like to look again to see from the lingual If that cusp tip of the maxillary first, second premolar now is fitting into the groove that we created on the lower. The maxillary first molar now. Hold it with the forefinger. Press it in place. And look from the lingual to see if that cusp tip is firmly into the groove down below. Now we're ready for the maxillary second molar. About to run out of wax back there, but I think we're going to make it. <laughs> place it in place, hold it with a finger, Press it in place. Now you'll notice those buccal cusps are not coming down into contact as we get back into here. That's the way they really should be. Probably these are the two teeth that will need to be changed slightly. With lingualized occlusion, as it means just that, the occlusion occurs from the lingual cusp of the maxillary and not from the buccal cusp. And in fact, it is desirable as we finish this arrangement and in the finished product that those buccal cusps do not touch in any position. What we're going to do is we're going to open the condyles now by loosening the little element that holds the condyle into centric relation. And we can put this through its paces by checking it, moving it over into working contact, and we see, as I predicted, that the second premolar and first premolar, the buccal cusp, have some contact. They will need to be moved slightly. If we look at that from the lingual, we should see as that is moved into working contact, all of those lingual cusps are in contact with the mandibular lingual cusp. They're in contact in centric relation, and when you move it into working relationship, it maintains contact 
lingual cusp of the maxillary with lingual cusp of the mandibular. Now, one of the other key elements to it is if you move it into non-working relation, we should have balancing cusp in that the lingual cusp of the upper should contact the buccal cusp of the lower. And that's called balancing contacts. In natural occlusion, that is very undesirable. But in denture occlusion, it is a necessity. If we move it into working, we see that we don't have any contact of the maxillary second and first molars, but we have contact of the buccal cusp of the maxillary premolars. That's undesirable. We will want to change that just a little bit. If we put it into non-working or balancing condition, we should have contacts of the maxillary lingual cusp against the mandibular buccal cusp. That's called balancing contacts. So we want to change these two teeth just slightly and we want to rotate them in this direction so that we raise the buccal cusp and lower the lingual cusp just slightly. And if you soften that wax, generally you can rotate those teeth just a little bit. Dr. Morris, can yes. you do that a tooth at a time and get one set before you go to the next one? You can, yes. I don't usually. I usually do it this way, but that's okay if you can do it that way. I'm just, that's yeah. my only question. Now they're just barely missing. And that's what I'm after. So now, now we have the one side arranged. And as you can see, the lingual cusp of the maxillary posterior teeth are making firm contact into that groove that we carved into the lower, the central groove of the lower. If we put it in working relation, we should have maintained contacts of the, the lingual cusp of the maxillary with the lingual cusp of the lower. And if we put it in balancing relation, we should maintain some contact of the lingual cusp of the maxillary against the buccal cusp of the lower. Now we're ready to move to the other side and do the same thing. So now we've eliminated enough wax so we should have plenty of room to place the teeth. In fact, I may have eliminated too much wax, but we'll see. So we pull some wax in the area of the first premolar, place the maxillary first premolar, and we want to place it in such a way as the lingual cusp is hanging a little lower than the buccal cusp and that we're following the arch form around the arch. Place it and see if it hits into that central groove, which it does. If you want to check it now, you can put it into working contact and we see that buccal cusp is hanging too low. If we put it into balancing contact, it's okay. So we need to just rotate that tooth just a little bit to raise the buccal cusp a little and lower the lingual cusp just slightly. And now we've raised it that way. We've got our contact for balance and we're just missing the buccal contact by just a fraction of a millimeter. The form is still looking good. If you notice this arch form, it's continuing with the buccal cusp falling into the arch form. One of the mistakes that I see is not continuing the buccal cusp into the arch form of allowing the teeth in the premolar region to drift too much out to the buckle and then you would have an unesthetic arrangement when you look at it from the labial you come around to the canine and not suddenly you'll see a premolar setting way out. Looks like they have eight or ten anterior teeth rather than six. wanting to space just a little bit between the first and second premolars, which is okay. I guess we need to analyze why is it wanting to do that. Now it's okay. Into, into working relation, we should see that that cusp is just barely glazing by without touching, and we come into lateral motion and that should hit and it's not quite and we can see when we look at the lingual of this in here this maxillary lingual cusp is not quite down into that central groove that's why we're having a little problem with it so we need to work with that a little more to get that You 
not quite there still. Let's see if I what I can do with this. There, that's better. Okay, it's working fine now. The only thing that I haven't done is when I look at it from here, this tooth has a very slight mesial inclination. I need to straighten it up somewhat. Looks better from there now. Yes, working better. Let's see what it's doing from the lingual now. Yes, maintaining that contact on the lingual working now very nicely now. Okay, let's move on to the second molar, or the first molar now. Is that if you have a class two or a slight class two jaw relationship, you will find that the first premolars won't want to come in there right. And I suspect we may need to do a little bit with that in order to make them aesthetically look better. And I'll show you that in just a minute. I don't have enough wax to hold the tooth, so I'm going to have to add some wax. So we mash it in till the lingual cusp are in good firm contact in the groove below, and we can check the lateral motion and see that in working, we're maintaining that contact. And in balancing, or non-working, we're maintaining that contact. Let's pull the wax for the second molar and we will arrange that tooth. Now let's pull the wax, get these teeth stabilized somewhat, and I'll show you what you have to do sometimes with premolars in a class two situation with lingualized occlusion. Sometimes the transition between the uh, horizontal overlap that you have of the anterior teeth to the posterior teeth does not allow you to place that first premolar where you would like to. For aesthetics purposes, you usually end up having to bring it somewhat to the buckle from where you would like it to be. And in a case like that, what you will have to do in order to bring that tooth to the buckle is to eliminate some of this lingual cusp right in this area. So what I like to do with them where I have that situation, as you can see, we're having a little problem right in here getting that tooth in the correct position. So let's remove that tooth and eliminate from the tooth the lingual cusp and just make it flat from the central glute groove of the cusp over through the lingual. That will allow you to place that tooth in whatever position you would like. All we've done is flattened off this lingual cusp so that it does not become a, an interference for us. And see if we can put that tooth into a better position aesthetically than what we had it a few minutes ago. So we just get a little softened wax now. And now rather than worrying about occlusion on it so much, we're going to worry about aesthetics to get that tooth into a very good aesthetic position. And now we'll see when we close that, that tooth has more horizontal overlap than do the remainder of the teeth. But in order to get a good aesthetic position of the buccal cusp, that becomes a necessity. And that makes it look from the anterior now, when you come around the arch form, it looks better right in here than it would if you did not eliminate that lingual cusp. I know the occlusion may not be perfect at this point. It's very close. So what we want to do with it at this point is we want to wax this denture into a very, very aesthetic, uh, aesthetic wax pattern so that when our patient comes in, on next visit for final try-in of all of the teeth in place, we have something to show him that is going to look similar to his finished denture 
and it's going to be aesthetically pleasing and he doesn't get a, uh, the idea that everything lo just looks sloppy. We want it to look as aesthetic as we can get it for that final try-in day. And we're going to flow wax and at this point what I like to do with it is remove it each arch from the articulator still leaving them on the cast and let's flow wax in all different areas to sort of semi festoon this case and get it ready for the final try in. Just to have it nice and smooth. As you can see we're a large hunk of wax missing right there. Rather than trying to flow that in a little bit at a time, let's provide a bulk of wax for that area by taking some fresh base plate wax and get a little bulk of wax available for us so that we can carve that without having to flow it one little bit at a time. Now we have enough bulk on there so we can flow that wax and get the contour of it without having to just flow molten wax onto it. Along the buckle, I'm going to add enough wax now to somewhat carve the, the around the collars of the tooth without having big voids and holes in the wax and it looking uh, all rough. And just flow enough wax so we'll be able to carve that and make it very aesthetic and smooth looking. Let that wax cool now while we add some wax to the other side. And then with a warm spatula, you can go over this palette and somewhat smooth it out just by flowing any of the little wax that's in there. Just flow it smoothly over the palatal surface. We've got enough wax on there now that we'll be able to carve that and make it look very nice and neat. In order to smooth it, getting ready to carve it, take your hand out torch and with a pinpoint flame, just brush it enough to smooth the wax and smooth it through the palette, nice and smooth. And we'll set that aside now and allow that wax to cool a little bit while we do the same to the mandibular arch. It has almost enough wax on it to be able to smooth it and make it look nice and neat. I want to add a little bit of wax right in here and then smooth that lingual with the pinpoint flame from the torch and the mandibular one will be in pretty good shape for us. In preparing your wax denture for the final try-in, that you get this down to at least within reason of what your, the contours that your finished product would be. You're not going to be perfect with it, but it should be down reasonably close to what those finished product would be. So we're going to add a little wax onto the buckle. And we, again, we don't need a lot on this mandibular one. It's not too far from being having enough wax to start with. And now I'm just going to smooth this wax at this point with the pinpoint flame from the hand out torch just to smooth it. We set that aside now 
go back and work on the maxillary. Been using in recent years, to, for particularly for this type of carving the wax, is just a, a good blade that has not been worn out from the Buffalo Number no. 7 R uh, knife, which has a good sharp blade to it and a nice point to the to the end of it. And if you use that properly, you can go around the teeth and somewhat carve the inner dental papilla and find the collar of the tooth. And what we're going to do is to carve inner dental papilla and get rid of all of the wax that is sticking up above the collar of the tooth. And as you see, we already did that on the anterior, so we don't have to do that again. So we're just going to carve it down to the collar. And generally, if you will take that good straight blade knife and above the cut mark now, remove all of the wax that's above the cut mark that you made when you went around the collar of each tooth. And basically, what we're really doing is cleaning the clinical crown of each tooth. Then on the lingual, scrape the wax down to get rid of the excess wax that's flowed up onto the lingual. And once you've gotten rid of the excess wax that's flowed up onto the teeth, now we're ready once again to smooth it by flaming it and just smooth all of the cut marks that we've made and basically just smoothing the wax to give it a nice smooth surface. At this point, you want to tease the trial denture off the master cast and smooth the peripheries by getting it off. And as you'll see where we have flowed wax onto it, we have lots of excess wax both on the cast and onto the periphery, the peripheries of the denture. So we want to clean that up by rounding and smoothing all of those peripheries and getting rid of the excess wax that's flowed up onto the periphery. And now we have a pretty good pattern for that maxillary arch at this point. And now we're going to do the same thing to the mandibular denture. By first of all, carving around the collar of each tooth a cut mark. Like so. We've already got the anterior done, so we can smooth around, come on around to the other side. Clean all the wax above the cut mark now, off of each tooth. Again, just take the edge of the knife, the point of the knife and the edge of the knife and clean all the wax off of the lingual surface like so. And now that we've cleaned the wax from above our cut line, the gingival line or the collar of each tooth, again we're going to smooth it with the torch so it's nice and smooth so that it'll be presentable. And once we've done that, we're going to tease the dentures off of the master cast. smooth all of the peripheries by getting any excess wax that's flowed down around the periphery. Get those nice and smooth so that when we try them in the mouth, they won't be rough on the patient and be nice and presentable. Once we smooth that up, 
Let's clean the cast up a little bit by getting rid of any excess wax that we have on the cast that might be in our way. We want to place them back onto the articulator and see to it that we have not changed occlusion. And as you can see, we've created a little interference of the wax posteriorly, so we're going to need to remove a little of this wax back here. I placed too much wax. So we just cut that wax down to the necessary contour that we need. And smooth it back off where, we, where we're carving on it. We have a nice arrangement of posterior teeth to try into Mr. Poor's mouth the final arrangement date.